Hello, everyone. Welcome to this group. I, all right, there we go. <laughs> Welcome to Living Acoustically. I, you know, you know when you like think you're gonna do something all proper and then you're like, um, but if I have to like make a graphic and then announce it and then wait a day and then all these things, I'm like, I don't know if I wanna do that anymore. So I might just start popping on here. We'll see. We'll see what everything wants. Let's see. Hello, everyone. 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 I don't even know. Okay, never mind. Whatever. Hi. <laughs> so, I'm on here, Malison Cox. I am Good Morning Donna. Today I had a like amazing conversation with my friend Louise. We did uh, English and Portuguese translated live over on Instagram. And then I had an amazing uh, session with Dr. Dane here. He's doing 14 days of ESC. And there happened to be a pretty cool theme kind of going on with uh, everything today, which was basically like, do you shrink down for anybody or anything? And do you even realize you're doing that? Um, and especially, I guess not especially, but sometimes when, if you are in relationship with people or you have friends or you have people at work or family and you realize that they, well, you wanna like make them comfortable or feel safe around you. Does that mean that you shut off parts and pieces of you so that you're not too scary? Or are you being all of you all the time? So I have a, I'm going to put this in here for now just so I get it out of the way, but I have a call coming up next week starting on Tuesday called Happiness Torture. And it's one of my favorite subjects. I've been coining it for the last couple years that uh, some of you might know. But um, so this call is going to facilitate, hopefully, uh, you into having more of you no matter who or what is around. And I'll go into a little bit of that right now, but oh my goodness fun look at my hair um i'll go into some of that so like for example let's say mm, i don't know i wish if you guys have any questions about this please post two or examples or anything that you like feel like you shrink down around it can even be your thoughts so your thoughts feelings and emotions in your own head can make you shrink down and even like go as far as making it hard to leave the house, making it hard to do anything new, making it hard to meet new people. Do you ever walk in a room and of new people or people you already know and you find yourself kind of shrinking or even getting sleepy? Um, oh, I will definitely put the link on the call here. But like, you know when you get around family and you're like kind of calm, like you, I don't know what you do around family, but you just kind of feel like you can't totally be you and you don't know why. What if it's because you are super aware, number one, and also you've been entrained to make, uh, basically to have people not dislike you and you will do whatever it takes so that everybody at least kind of likes you enough to be polite to your face, no matter what's going on in the background. Ooh, and Donna says, how can I catch myself in the moment when I'm shrinking so I can change it? Exactly, we're gonna go over a lot of that in three calls next week, actually. Um, but you want to be aware of, again, whatever is heavy is not yours. And one of the best examples I can think of right now is actually training horses. Um, and for those of you who have not been around a horse, I suggest just going up around a horse. It's kind of easier than going up around people, <laughs> but you can definitely do this with people too. In fact, that would be so fun. If you just go up, you know how you can go like find a horse and be on the other side of the fence and just be, you know, be, you could like go into Starbucks and just like stand next to someone and see what happens. <laughs> I don't know. but. You'll be so aware, so if you go around a horse, um, if, especially if you're like training a horse, so I train younger horses and so we'll be in a round pen together and I'll get a sense of where that horse is at and sometimes I'll feel bad, like I'll think that I'm doing something wrong because the horse isn't doing what I want it to, because it's not a, as far along as it should be, because I skipped a few um, steps in communication with this horse and I wasn't being present 
which, with what was actually going on with that particular horse. So one easy way to do that with people is to stop and relax and take a breath and be like, okay, if I wasn't wrong here, and if nobody else was wrong here, what am I perceiving is going on in the room or around people? So Donna, before you shrink down, you can notice the shrink down, that is totally okay. Notice the shrink down, don't buy it as yours, um, and then just acknowledge what you're perceiving. Are you perceiving anxiety, worriedness, like lies? Sometimes people will act happy, but really there's other stuff going on in the background. And so you don't have to make any of that wrong. You just get to acknowledge, oh, I'm just aware of stuff that's heavy, that's not congruent with, number one, maybe what's coming out of the people's mouths. Number two, not congruent with what they're presenting on their face. And number three, just not congruent with who and what you be. And the only reason you can feel it is just because it's not you. So there is no wrong with that heavy shrunk feeling. It's just, it's not you. So you get to expand out even greater and bigger and just be like, wow, I perceive all of this and I can still be out here. Um, so with the horses, the other day, I there's this one horse, it's actually my horse, Lily. <laughs> She had, like was, we've been doing so much cool stuff the, the last week even, um, where I have been really coming out of my shell in regards to, there's like an old way that I used to do things, which was more of like force and, you know, making it look good from my point of view of what I was doing, but not really truly, totally being present with what was actually going on and the subtle nuances of like, was she responding to what I was communicating? Was I responding to what she was communicating? And once you acknowledge that everything gets lighter or you at least have a lot more choice together to co-create something. So yes, or yesterday, um, there's we were in the round pen and instead of like, you know, exercising her and getting her at least to like, getting me to feel like we did something that day, I did a lot less like just moving for work, I guess. I would have considered it play before, but I'm like, oh, sorry. I think I was just working you. I wasn't really being as present as I could be, which is a cool thing to acknowledge for me because I've been doing this for years now. And it's like, oh, I apologize. You know what? New me. Hello, I am Allison. You own me. Hello, Lily. So kind of reintroduced ourselves and I was like, okay, Let's just play with like subtle things. What do I have to be or do? Where do I have to put my energy? Do I have to be off your body, on your body in order to ask you to take one step with just your front feet this way? And now just your front feet that way. And that just started to open up a like an energetic connection with her in a totally different way than before. Whereas before I would also be aware of her, sometimes when we go in the round pen, she's aware of all of the stallions and her herd of girls and the horses she needs to protect and things like that. So they'll be screaming at each other and I'll be aware of all of that. And I'll, I would actually like shrink down, trying to pretend I wasn't shrunken down, but I'd be like, oh my God, if I wasn't, um, if I wasn't, didn't know any better, I would think that I was uh, like frantic or now with like just playing relaxing and playing with these small exercises of hey would you do this sure awesome would you do that sure awesome we were able to go out outside of the round pen and go for a big long walk around this big coal mine like a big trail and which usually she was like there is a wolf and a dragon and squirrels and prairie dogs everywhere and everything was like terrifying and she would not be calm this time, because I did that exercise first with energy pulls, with communion, we were able to walk around like nothing, like just calm, like, oh, we're walking back here. She was even calm enough to like eat some grass back there and like, hmm, okay. She gave one whinny at the beginning, like I'm going out to the other girls. And it was a totally different experience. I was like, what? It's been this easy the whole time. Not that it's going to look the same every single time, but you can start to do that with people. Like if you're, again, if you're in a group of people or even just with one person, what can you start to notice and acknowledge about that person or the group of people or that thing that's always in your head? 
what can you just acknowledge first? Like, okay, is anything I'm perceiving actually mine or is it someone else's or something else's? Okay, not mine. Now I can relax. So what energy pull could I use or push? So you can pull and push energy with people, kind of like me asking to move Lily just one step to the right or to the left. And after that one step, it was like, done, yay, thank you. What if it was just like a simple hello to someone in the room and that was it? You didn't even have to start a conversation, but even those little things are gonna start moving the energy and they're gonna allow you to relax and the other people to relax. You'll also get information of people where that's just too much. And so if it's too much, if, if what I did with Lily was too much for another horse, I would actually stop and start somewhere totally different. Like <clears throat> if they were terrified of the round pen, I would maybe, if I could get them out there, maybe bring them in the round pen and just let them hang out for a little bit. And that would be it. So what if like you introduced yourself to this group of people, you got to relax. Um, you noticed when you said hi to people, everyone was totally shut off. You could just let it be that, not say anything to anyone, but just be you relaxing and allow them to have whatever points of view they need to have. And even that is going to start changing everything. It's gonna start changing the energy and and the projections and the walls, the limitations and the barriers of the projections and expectations that everybody has of you, that you have of them, it's going to start melting those lies and it's going to allow a different possibility to show up. A different possibility does not equal, I have learned this, like I said, I am learning. I admit I'm still learning, um, but holy cow, is it cool. A different possibility doesn't mean it's going to look exactly how you want it to or look exactly how it should go. It just means there's going to be a different possibility available. Maybe you're going to get somewhere with that person or those people that you haven't been able to before. Maybe it's just going to be easier for you to be around yourself. Um, so if you are alone too, you can do this too with your thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Just acknowledge, hey, is that heavy? Hey, do could I have another point of view about this? Like about money. If you think, does your when you think about money, does it make you shrink? That's just self-torture. You're self-torturing you. Happiness torture is, oh, this is making me shrink. Okay, that's not true. So if I'm out here and this is like here, I was just going under it. So if I were outside of it, what other point of view about it could I have? What question could I ask? And by doing so, you are then happiness torturing everything and everyone else. And I call it happiness torture just because some people, again, will be inspired by this. Some people will hate you for this, for having so much ease, for, for choosing for you. And those are the people that you're actually going to torture, which I kind of love that. I'm like, you don't want me to be all of me? Then I'm going to torture you, thanks. Uh, which is pretty fun for me. So if that sounds like fun for you, and if you'd like to know more about this, and of course we're going to clear so many things that are going to make it easier for you to just be you around everyone and everything, as if by magic. If that sounds fun for you, please join me and a bunch of us. It'll be translated into, I mean, not English. It will be in English and in Spanish, Portuguese, and Arabic. If that sounds fun for you, please join us next week on Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time, and I cannot wait to play with you. And please listen to this again, because um, you're going to get a lot of little nuances that you didn't hear in the first place. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day, and I'll see you soon.